Alright, Swiss chard. Swiss chard is uh, is edible. All right, and uh, typically people use it almost like a like a green. So you just sort of boil it uh, pretty heavily. You can put it in salads and things for some uh, some accents, but for the most part, uh, they they boil them pretty heavily and try to get. Uh, uh, boil them down the greens. But you'll notice these are actually uh, ornamental species because of the stalks, okay, because of the petioles and because of the mid ribs, and because sometimes the, uh, the actual leaves will sort of come on to a darker uh, reddish cast. Okay. That one that's really red is it just is there a particular reason for it? Just uh, no environmental reason. It's just a uh, gen genetic thing. It's just as healthy as just yes, as yes, as absolutely. Okay. So represented here are pretty well the colors that you'll see. You'll see whites, yellows, uh, oranges, and reds. And I mean dark reds. This is Swiss chard. Okay. Beta vulgaris variety cichla. So look for really vibrantly colored petioles vibrantly colored veins within the leaves. Okay. The darker the reds, the more uh, typical it would be for the actual green foliage to be turned sort of a darker uh, reddish or uh, bronzish, bronzish color. Bronzish is a hard word to say. All right, and uh, eventually these things get up to be uh, two foot, two and a half foot tall, large plants, and just that wide, if not a little bit more wide than that, okay? So they get to be large, but there's not a whole lot that you guys need to see other than just the petioles and the stems. Look for this really, again, very rugose, looks very quilted, like somebody uh, sort of puffed up in between the veins, okay? And vibrantly colored petioles and mid ribs. It does eventually, uh, I believe, do some sort of a bloom, but it's not attractive, and it again signifies the uh, the end of the useful life of the plant. Okay. Everybody happy with that one?